I'm Hilary Hahn, and I am here with... Sue on this iceberg. And what do you do? I'm a composer. I write music. How did you get started with that? Um, I think I always, um, I've always been writing music or say inventing music as long as I've been playing music. I remember when, when I started playing piano, um, it's, um, what? Sorry, I'm having a little trouble with my Skype. I'm listening. I am really listening. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Okay. Um, you know, you, you start uh, playing these very, very simple melodies, of course, when the very first piano lessons that you have. Mm -hmm. And after a few lessons, I, I was trying to, yeah, copy that, really. And, you know, you just take the... Um, take the patterns and rearrange them a bit and hooray, I've done my first composings and um, that's really that's really how you start and yeah, you, as, um, as you learn more music, as you get to play more music, listen to more music, uh, the vocabulary um, develops and yeah, so that's really how it goes. You just, yeah, you just do it. Cool. And um, I, so I'm having a little trouble with Skype, so I'm going to come in and out. But you're fine. Oh, so, okay. Um, and as a composer now, when you think back to what you did when you started, was it something you were compelled to do? Or was it something that someone told you you should do? And all of that. What do you think? Um, it's really something that I started with because I wanted to because, it, because it's fun. I guess it started by you want to copy something or yeah, you, yeah. You you have people that you look up to. You hear music that you think I want to do this myself. Um, and time by time. I guess you develop an own language or you want to express yourself and maybe um, the reason why you do it changes in that way. Um, but really it's... Um, I've, I've played in a punk band um, when I was in high school and pretty much at the same time I was gigging as an organ player in a church and writing the kind of prestige uh, music that, um, you know, churchy style somehow. Um, and it's really just, um, I like doing it and uh, it's, it's fun to do. Um, and that's really how, how, it, how it started. With that mix of music, did you just immerse yourself in music entirely or were you doing other things as well? Yeah, it's mostly been, been music. Most of my life, really, it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it's, is it because it's an outlet, or is it because of some other thing? Are you drawn, why are you drawn to it? Because that's, yeah, really, that's quite yeah, a range. Know. <laughs> you know, like, organ in a church is quite different from being in a punk band, and I can see how both would develop naturally, um, but... I you have to really love music in general, really. no? Yeah, I don't know if it's that different, really. If, if you look at it as being, uh, well, for, from the pure musical standpoint, it's pretty much the same in a way. You're, um, you're adapting a style, you're learning a style, and, and you're somehow going into that. Of course, it's, it's, it's totally different from the whole attitude that goes along with it, sure. Um, but anyway, that was in, in, in high school, and anyway, you're trying to find yourself, so you're trying out lots, lots mm -hmm. of things. Um, but from the musical point, no, I just thought it was interesting to do that, interesting to do this, and um, I guess I still think that. I like combining, I don't know, what... what Whatever comes to my mind, whatever I see, whatever I read, whatever I hear, um, somehow 
I hope that becomes me and um, the output is then I don't know with, with such a mix of things it must be personal output somehow yeah? that's so true I, that's true <laughs> and with well with that organ background I I've noticed that people who um, uh, this connection is driving me crazy sorry my fault um, so I've noticed that people who are very familiar with polyphony, multiple voices at once, in mm -hmm. their performance instrument, mm -hmm. are also very comfortable with it in their writing. Do you see a parallel there for you? In that way that I do think that the purely classical skills of composing are still extremely important. That's, But that's not only uh, poly polyphony, it's, 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 it's the harmony as well, it's, it's the, mm -hmm. the instrumentation, um, it's, and I, I really think that the original craftsmanship that, well, always has belonged to composing, but maybe for some time has been neglected somehow, um, really should be more important again, and I think it is becoming more important again in, in, in how... Yeah, and how can composers write today? Uh, maybe that's a bit funny coming from somebody who hasn't studied composition, actually, because I didn't. Um, I studied piano and I studied conducting. Um, but of course, I mean, I, I've, I've, you know, you've, I've been reading the Rimsky calls I I've been studying the scores, I've been, I've been diving maybe even more in, in, into that uh, classical stuff that you have to know or that once you had to know to compose um, whereas I don't know possibly if I had studied composing I would have gone more into uh, oh my god what are, what are they inventing now at Ilkham and what do they have of crazy um, crazy new composition techniques and maybe coming from the musician angle rather than from the um, composition manual, um, I've always felt drawn to these, yeah, classical, um, classical craftsmanship things. Do you find that as someone who hasn't gone to formal composition school, although of course all the studying you do, you've, you've learned a ton and you're a great composer, so it all turned out fine, <laughs> do you feel that people look at you differently among other composers, like your colleagues? Do you feel like that makes any difference at all? I think, you know, everybody talks about everybody and everybody will have um, something bad to say about some people and some good to say hopefully too about some people. Mm -hmm. And you know how it is among uh, colleagues, it's, there, there will always be some uh, <laughs> So probably, I guess, if somebody wants to say something bad about me, that's that's what they point at. But I, I don't really feel uh, feel as an outsider in that. I have good friends in the, uh, among composers. And, well, it feels like uh, a pretty just, inclusive. Copenhagen, when I was studying piano, they were composers there, and we, we, we still have great contacts. And all of a sudden, we are colleagues where. I, were colleagues in another way before, mm -hmm. uh, and, it, and it's, it's, it's kind of funny, and uh, I really feel good uh, among colleagues, actually. Yeah, it's a very inclusive field, I find. You know, there, there's room for a lot of different people. There is. Uh, you definitely do have different different lines, and there is, there will always be jealousy. It's, it's, it's as everywhere, um, when there's art, it's, it's, it's about sharing something but it's also very strong personalities mm -hmm. so there's also battle going on everywhere um, I think it's the same as you all, you all know from, from playing the violin and with, with your colleagues there it's, it's pretty much the same thing I think well I actually don't I, most of the people, most of the musicians that I come in contact with are orchestra musicians and I have a number of friends in orchestras I don't actually see my colleagues who are soloists very often because there's pretty much just one of us on the program and right. people say that um, composing is pretty um, solitary 
do you see other composers? Do you is there a place where you all meet? How does that work? <laughs> there is the internet. Um, <laughs> there are no, forums it's, it's, where all the composers go and talk. I, really, I don't know. Um, of course, you will have a few friends where you know where, where, where you share things, where you where you ask them advice. Um, you, you need to have people around you that, that you can trust and whose expertise you trust. Um, but, of course, it, it, it is a lonely job in that way that you're sitting there, you're inventing things, you're, you're trying out things for yourself that you wouldn't want other people to start copying too early. And mm -hmm. So, it is a lonely job, I have to say, in some way, as it is. How do you deal with that? Um, gee, I don't know. Um, some people like that kind of thing, and some people find they look for ways to change their context. But Does it's also, you know, music is such a wide field, and when you when you are dealing with it, you're you're so into it. Um, it, it, it feels so natural to really just dive into it and, and be there and stay there and it really feels good mm -hmm. um, and of course you do get out you know when, when then there's an orchestra performance and there's lots of people around you and everybody's uh, talking and, and you're somehow in the center of that pro project because you invented it and everybody comes and asks you about things um, so it's these flashy moments all of a sudden, um, and those are the highlights, and then you can can go back again and say, oh, <laughs> it's again, finally, and then you can go and be nerdy again, and you'll be <laughs> um, I, I like it that way, actually. <laughs> so this piece that you're writing for my project, my uh, Encores project, do yes. you want to talk about it a little bit? Give us a title, about that, yeah, sure. description? Um, I called it levitation, and it's it's always one of the hardest things in composing is really finding the titles. Mm. Um, I always tend to find the titles when when the piece is in uh, has evolved in some way enough to show me where it's going. Mm -hmm. um, so that I can listen to it and, um, yeah, you know, I find that the, the piece gives me an idea of, of what it is rather than me trying to force it, it somewhere. Um, and with this piece, I had the idea that it's going, it, it's something that roughly is just going on. Um, it's, it's light in a way without being light. Wait, how, 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 how can we put that um, like, like a constellation or something? Mm -hmm. It's light without being bright, like... Light as in... Bubble or something? Light as in illumination or light as in weight? Um, can be a double meaning. Um, uh, light at the end of a tunnel. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this, this light that you have in... Uh, people say you have in a near death. Uh, mm -hmm. something, maybe it's going going that way. Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely something uplifting in it, but without, I mean, it's not a happy piece. Um, but, um, yeah, it feels floating in some way, mm -hmm. levitating. Mm -hmm. and How would you describe what you wrote? Um, Obviously, you haven't heard it yet performed, so I right. imagine that will change it as well for you. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'd describe it as something positive. Um, yeah, um, what I just, uh, what I just said about yeah, floating, levitating, fast, uh, slow, floating in the way of consolation. Um, would you say it's fast, slow? How did you write for piano and violin? Free, I think it's, it's, it's something. It's it, it's moving. Um, there, there's an intro, introduction. It's 
It takes the first wave, falls a bit, bit back. Um, there's there's a little coral uh, section in the middle, and then it um, has something very liberating, I think, in the end. Um, maybe that's that's why I thought of a levitation as well. Something that I sort of up as a title as well, just just like that. Obviously, that that doesn't go because of that cartoon film. Um, it is a cute uh, film, I have to say. It's a good film. It is, but it's a, yeah, it's slightly. <laughs> but the name is taken. <laughs> so um, that's, I guess that's how I, I would describe it. It is something that that is going through some uh, some development, and somehow ends good. Can we say that? Mm -hmm. It's a short I'm time excited, to do that. Very excited. What what would you get out of it? Because really, it's what. Once when you're through with a piece, when when you it's it's really it's really all outside of you already. So any anything that I I, I, I say about the piece mm -hmm. is, is interpretation where what you say about it is just as valid, or what anybody says about it is, is really as valid as I feel as as, as what I um, how I hear it. Well, I don't know a piece until, like, I don't really know a piece until I've performed it a few times. I feel like then it shows its character. It, it, it um, I know what my relationship is to it. And I'm always curious what something is for the person who wrote it before it came to life as well. Because for you, coming to life, the piece coming to life, it could do that at any stage, you know, where you get the first idea of it, where you have finished writing it, where you hear it, or when multiple people have played it, or something like that. There are so many different phases of which it could kind of just say, oh, hello, I'm here, this is who I am. <laughs> right. Um, and of course, in fact, it, it changes all the time. Like, it's, mm -hmm. like when you play, play PG, you... you you see a piece from different angle, uh, all of a sudden I think, oh, I didn't think of that. And then and, and you play that way, suddenly and the same happens when you write a piece, then you, you oh. get some material, you start working with it, and um, all of a sudden some, yeah, you get another twist on it, and I think, oh, that's why it wants to go, and then work, work on it that um, mm -hmm. way for, for some time, possibly go back, and really it's, um, I think, Composing is I can't remember who who the um, the the artist is the sculptor who who said that um, when he's cutting something in stone he's not so much cutting the sculpture but um, he's uh, deliberating it um, freeing it out of that stone it's it's already there mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. cutting crap away to make it visible mm -hmm. um, and in some way that's really what's happening um, when you when you're composing or that's how I feel um, you get some ideas and then you, then you put them together and you see oh that didn't work you try something else maybe you you, you skip the whole thing and have to start uh, from from scratch again mm -hmm. um, and the material really shows you what is right and what isn't and so, so you, you you're going you're diving into it as um, uh, as some um, yeah discoverer who's 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 trying to find the true soul of something mm -hmm. or um, you know trying to find an island somewhere and you're going and where where can it be and um, <laughs> you're really searching for something and, mm -hmm. and hopefully then finding it mm -hmm. and you definitely know if if it's right or not while you're sitting at it. You know when you hit the ground. I think so. You definitely know when you don't. Uh, <laughs> you, right? Yeah. You must hit points at which you... Does it ever get to a place where you hit a dead end and you have to backtrack and figure out why that's a dead end and go in a different direction? Kind of like a maze? All the time. All mm -hmm. the time. It's... Um, I, th I think for painters or for writers um, it, it must be the same but actually the, the, the major part of, of, of creating something is throwing away it's um, because ideas just come uh, and 
and it, they're not always the right ones and you have to choose and, and you, you really have to try out many things before you know um, um, before you know what you want to use um, that's maybe, quite a process it is but so it is of course when, when, you, when you're learning a piece I mean, if you think about how much you're practicing compared to how much you're performing Mm -hmm. And if you think of that practicing as, you know, you're trying out things um, and say, okay, no, that wasn't good. I'll just try this fingering instead. Um, yeah. Uh, try different phrasing. Um, not only in uh, in the solo um, in the solo playing, but but in chamber music or, uh, as well, or in orchestra rehearsals, it's it's. Um, of course, it's not just trial and error, and neither is composing. Mm -hmm. uh, but lots of it is is really, yeah, trying to find out what the right way to do things is. Yeah. Oh, that's that's so cool. I've you've lost my picture because my camera has gone psychedelic, and I didn't <laughs> want to give anyone any you know nausea or anything. So I'm just going to wrap it up, and just want to say thank you so much. Um, thank you. It's been great. I'm going to try to say bye. Do I look psychedelic at all? I don't know. It keeps coming in and out for me. So, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye.